That smells good. All those sweet berries just bursting with ripe juiciness. They're mighty hard to resist. <laughs> You're just in time. Strawberry Shortcake and all her friends are getting ready for their first annual garden party. A celebration of the most fragrantly delicious berries in the whole world. One and two and one and two and okay, one now. and two. Decorations, tablecloth, fruit punch, and the music. <laughs> Plum pudding. Mm -hmm. Everything looks so very pretty. Our garden party is going to be the best party ever. Just one more very important thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody, I'd like you to meet my new friend, two, three, Banana Twirl. Pleased to meet you all. Thank you for inviting me to your garden party, Strawberry. <laughs> Where do you get all your energy from? I guess I treat everything I do like an exercise. Does that include berry hunting? Berry hunting? That's right. As soon as each of us finds the very best fruit or berry in all of Strawberry Land for our place of honor, we can begin our garden party. Hey, let's go! Yay! <laughs> now remember, everybody, only the very, very best. Now it's the very, very best that we're looking for. We want the very, very best, and here's what for. We're gonna have us a party, it's just for you. And, and nothing, nothing but, but the very, very, very best will do. You want the perfect orange and the perfect lime. You want the perfect berry with the perfect shine. You want the perfect peach with the perfect fuzz. It's the, the very, very, very best. best was. Now it's gotta taste great, it's gotta smell divine You got to choose those goodies just one at a time You got to scrutinize, you got to pick them by hand Just the very, very best in berry land The very, very best in berry land The very, very best in berry land Yay! the very best berries had been collected, everything was ready for the garden party. Well, that is almost everything. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Miss Strawberry Shortcake.
she wants to be when she grows up. When I grow up, I'll have to wait till it grows just a very bit longer. are my helpers. Each one has a special scent all their own. Blueberry can dusts a blueberry scent. The smell of ripe plums plum berry can gives scent. To lemons lemon berry can add scent to touch tart and raspberry can's aroma is true to the art. Sweet and fresh that's orange berry can's fair. Limes without lime berry can would seem a bit bare. Banana berry can's banana fragrance is very unique. Peach berry can scent is really a treat and strawberry can's aroma is the sweetest of sweet. Berry can's does to make sure everything's laced for the more fragrant the scent the better the taste. Yodel? Then stop complaining. But pizza with chocolate frosting? Yeah. Don't worry about it, Burby. Once we mix all these wonderful smells in your scent distillery, we'll be rich and famous. Yeah. <laughs> We'll never succeed in creating the world's most wonderful perfume. We're only adding to a potpourri of putrid failures. Hmm. Berry bird, go out and get three double cheeseburgers. Heavy on the caramel sauce. Oh, I wonder if it's safe to release all these ghastly smelling gases outside. What possible damage could a few little whiffs of this vile vapor do? Don't you just love the smell of fresh strawberries after the rain? Ugh! It smells like pizza! Double pepperoni! And this one smells like popcorn! <laughs> Pretzels! <laughs> Chocolate! Something is rotten in Strawberry Land. The rain changed all the scents. The rain? But how? I'm not sure, but I'm going to find out. In the meantime, the Berrykins can make everything smell sweeter than ever. Then they better hurry. At the rate that cloud is expanding, I calculate that we only have one hour before it bursts wide open. Then Strawberry Land will be soaked in all those awful smells. And we only got one hour. Ooh, I didn't 
see that strange cloud coming. In less than an hour, it'll rain horrible smells all over Strawberry Land. I hope the Berry Princess and her berrykins can help Strawberry before it's too late. Berry Princess, over here, quack! Oh, now it looks like they've got another problem. Elderberry Owl? What are you doing? <laughs> the flowers smell like marshmallows. Elderberry Owl doesn't know that she's really eating flowers. <laughs> I don't think your pet cares for the real taste of cherry blossoms. <laughs> Custard? <laughs> These lemons smell like catnip. A little sour custard? Your pets don't understand any of this, Strawberry, and we're running out of time. Well, I'll just have to give them a quick lesson. Run down center! Sometimes things aren't what they seem to be. Sometimes things can fool your nose or your eyes, you see? Sometimes something smells so sweet, but it might not be right to eat. Sometimes things aren't what they seem to be. 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 You might think that this was that, <laughs> but that was this, you see. You might think that these were those, taking signals from your nose. Sometimes things aren't what they seem to be. Sometimes things aren't what they seem to be. It's just a messed up world sometimes. But here's what you can do. You might have to look close. You might have to step back to make sure it's right for you. Sometimes things aren't what they seem to be. Sometimes things aren't what they seem no, to be. No, sometimes things aren't what they seem to be. <laughs> Okay, Berrykins, it's time to do your stuff. Be quick, be sure, and be careful out there. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to help, Berry Princess. Okay, Banana Twirl, keep an eye on the Berrykins. Yay! Now let's find out where that cloud is coming from. perfume is a roaring failure. Perhaps a little less peppermint and a little more chicken gravy. Over my dead nostrils. <laughs> oh, don't bust your crusts and answer your window. Someone's at the window. Strawberry shortcake? Hmm. 
News of failure travels fast. And, uh, who is this? I should have known that cloud had something to do with you. Cloud? What cloud? In about 15 minutes, that cloud is going to rain your stinky smells over everything in Strawberry Land. How romantic. Oh, surely a man of your intelligence can see the adverse effect this rain would have on the environment. I'm on the verge of a discovery that will make my fame and fortune. But I would gladly put all of that aside for the sake of Strawberry Land. Now that will give us more time to deal with the problem. Thank you for your help, Mr. Mud Pie. Uh, uh, that's a pie, man. Hmm. You pathetic purple pea brain. Ah! Oh. Oh. Yes. What have we here? What's awful? Oh. Oh. It's okay, princess. The berry bird burying up the berrykins. <gasps> what? You just missed him. He took them up to Porcupine Peak. What a terrible smell! You see, Sour Grapes, because of my berry bird, we can finally create the world's most wonderful perfume! <coughs> the dust from these little berry creatures will make the most irresistible perfume! I'll make a fortune! But what about me? I'd prefer you to be my silent partner. Now, pedal! Hello! Oh, Mr. Pie Man! The very princess! I'm irresistible! Don't move one minuscule muscle! I'll handle this! His light's on, but nobody's home. You have my barricans, and I want them back. You get them back as soon as we shake them scentless. Ow! <laughs> We've got a plan, Berry Princess, but there's no time to explain. I'm ready for anything, Strawberry. Good, but we've got to work fast. They better. <laughs> This cloud's going to burst in five minutes. I'll do what I can about that storm cloud. Leave the berrykins to us. Good luck. Okay, strawberrykin, let's go! This is going to be fun! Be faster! All right, Billy Nappers. Make my day. Get her, Perpy. Good work, Strawberry 
because of you, sour grapes, I now smell like lasagna pudding. And because of your bungling, I reek of lobster cupcakes. She's only got 15 seconds before the cloud bursts. There she is. All or nothing. I can't see her anymore. Oh, no. It's too late. But what's happened to the fairy princess? Wow. I declare, I smell peaches. Lots of peaches. Everything in Strawberry Land was back to smelling sweeter than ever. And Strawberry's garden party was the best party yet. Strawberry, I really must be going, and I'd like you and your friends to watch over the little berrykins for me. Oh, we will, Berry Princess, we will! Then goodbye, Strawberry Shortcake, for now. Goodbye, Berry Princess, and we'll take very good care of the little berrykins. What? Uh, uh, oh! Thank you, Strawberry Shortcake. you've traveled through the very wonderful world of Strawberry and met Strawberry Shortcake and all her friends, you'll be so happy to know that another whole world of adventure is now available from Parker Brothers Strawberry Shortcake book series. In each of these ten special stories, the Strawberry Land friends get together for some very exciting adventures. And three of these stories are all about baby Strawberry Shortcake and her friends as much younger and lovable characters. Now hurry and join baby Strawberry Shortcake in two of her very wonderful stories, The Strawberry Land Choo Choo and A Surprise for Baby Blueberry Muffin. Bump. Baby Raspberry Tart's red wagon bumped into Baby Blueberry Muffin's purple wagon. Plop! Out they tumbled into Baby Strawberry Shortcake's berry patch. Their eyes popped wide open when they saw Baby Strawberry's shiny new tricycle. 
Do you like it? asked Baby Strawberry Shortcake. I sure do, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. Baby Raspberry Tart sighed. I wish I had a tricycle. I was just taking this basket of strawberries to Baby Cherry Cuddler. She has a cold. These will make her feel better. Let me take them, Strawberry, called Baby Blueberry Muffin. I want to ride your tricycle. Baby Raspberry Tart frowned. Hey, I'm next. Okay, Blueberry, said Strawberry Shortcake, but be careful. Baby Blueberry Muffin took the basket of berries and zoomed away. Toot, toot, went the tricycle horn. The pedals spun around and around. She stuck her feet high in the air. Whee! This is fun! She was going so fast that she didn't notice Baby Lemon Meringue and Frappe Frog. Help! cried Baby Lemon Meringue when she saw Baby Blueberry Muffin coming. Splash! She jumped into the pond. Thump! The tricycle bumped into a stump. The basket of berries flew into the air and fell like strawberry snow. Plop, plop, plop. One juicy strawberry landed on Baby Lemon Meringue's head. Splat! Watch where you're going, Baby Lemon Meringue cried. You almost hit me. Oh, gasped Baby Blueberry Muffin. I'm so sorry. Here, let me help you. She pulled a dripping baby lemon meringue out of the pond and then pedaled slowly back to Strawberry's berry patch. Did Baby Cherry Cuddler like my berries? asked Strawberry. She looked into the empty basket. Not exactly, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. I sort of spilled them. Baby Strawberry Shortcake's mouth flew open. Spilled them? Baby Blueberry Muffin plopped down next to a mud puddle and began to slap together a juicy mud pie and some little mud muffins. Here, Strawberry, said Baby Raspberry Tart. Let me ride your tricycle. I'll zip another basket over to Baby Cherry Cuddler. I promise I won't spill a single one. Baby Raspberry Tart climbed onto the new tricycle. Her little monkey rhubarb hopped on behind her. Don't be gone long, called Baby Strawberry Shortcake. And tell Baby Cherry Cuddler I hope she feels better. I will, called Raspberry. She pushed the pedals of the tricycle. Around and around the berry patch she flew. Look at me, Strawberry. I can go really fast. Watch this. Be careful, called Baby Strawberry Shortcake. Rhubarb jumped up and down, chittering and chattering. Isn't this fun? said Baby Raspberry Tart, turning around to see him. She forgot to watch where she was going. Crash! Smack into Baby Blueberry Muffin went Baby Raspberry. Glump! Up from the back of the tricycle shot Rhubarb Monkey, like a cannonball from a cannon. He sailed through the air and landed on top of Baby Blueberry Muffin's head. Strawberries flew everywhere, and Rhubarb opened his mouth wide to catch them as they fell. Plop, plop, plop. Ouch, my head, cried Baby Raspberry Tart. My tricycle, said Baby Strawberry Shortcake. Oh, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. She wiped the mud from her face. You ought to watch where you're going, Raspberry. Look what you've done. I'm sorry, Blueberry, but maybe you should watch where you're sitting, said Baby Raspberry Tart. Baby Strawberry Shortcake wiped some mud from her tricycle. We'll never get my strawberries to Baby Cherry Cuddler. Baby Blueberry Muffin hopped back on the tricycle. Give me one more chance, Strawberry. I'll deliver the berries. I won't spill any. She tooted the horn. She wanted so much to ride the tricycle again. Now wait a minute, Blueberry, said Baby Raspberry Tart. My turn isn't over yet. Yes, it is. Now it's my turn to ride. I want it, said Baby Raspberry Tart. No, you had it long enough. Let me have it, Strawberry. Baby Raspberry Tart pulled the tricycle away from Baby Blueberry Muffin. You can't have my tricycle, Raspberry, said Baby Strawberry Shortcake. Aw, oh, Strawberry. And you can't have it either, Blueberry. Why not? 
asked Baby Blueberry Muffin. I'll take good care of it. Baby Raspberry frowned. I thought you were my friend, Strawberry. But I am your friend. I'm everyone's friend. That's why we will all share my tricycle. That's impossible, said Baby Raspberry Tart. Nothing is impossible. Baby Strawberry Shortcake closed her eyes and thought very hard. I've got it. Let's make a tricycle train. Baby Strawberry Shortcake quickly pulled Baby Blueberry Muffin's purple wagon behind her tricycle and pushed Baby Raspberry Tart's red wagon behind the purple wagon. Then she broke off a curly strawberry vine and tied the tricycle and wagons together. I'll be the engineer, Baby Strawberry called. You be the conductor, Blueberry, and Raspberry, you be the passenger. We have a special delivery to make to Baby Cherry Cuddler. Baby Strawberry Shortcake gathered another basket of ripe red strawberries and put them onto her tricycle. A tricycle train, said Baby Raspberry Tart. Baby Blueberry Muffin climbed into her purple wagon. All aboard the Strawberry Land Choo Choo, she called. Watch out for the cow on the tracks. That's no cow, silly. That's custard said Baby Raspberry. Hop on, Custard. Toot, 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 went the horn. Woo-hoo, sang Baby Blueberry Muffin. Chug, 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 said Baby Raspberry Tart. Soon all the kids in Strawberry Land had joined the Strawberry Land Choo Choo. You're right, Strawberry, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. We can all share your new tricycle. Is it my turn yet to be the engineer? Everyone gets a turn. And the wonderful Strawberry Land Choo Choo went chug chug chugging happily down the path to Baby Cherry Cuddler's garden. Blueberry Muffin woke up with a smile. She knew it was a special day. As she opened her window, the air in her room filled with a sweet smell. Baby Blueberry Muffin looked out at her blueberry patch. Her blueberries were ripe, and it was time to pick them. How lovely, she said softly. Each bush was filled with plump blueberries. The berries seemed to shine as she watched them. She couldn't wait to go outside and see them up close. It's summer, my favorite time of year, she said to Cheesecake, her little pet mouse. Cheesecake sniffed the sweet air and squeaked happily. Baby Blueberry Muffin and Cheesecake strolled down the rows of bushes. Baby Blueberry held out her arms. She felt like hugging each bush. Instead, she hugged Cheesecake. She picked a few blueberries and put them in her hat. Then she tied a few on a ribbon around Cheesecake's neck. The blueberries are so lovely. I'd like to share them with my friends, she said to Cheesecake. Baby Blueberry Muffin loved the other Strawberry Land kids, but she was such a dreamer and she was very shy. Could she ask them to the blueberry patch? Yes, I will do it, she said. I must not be shy. After all, they are my friends. Cheesecake pushed Baby Blueberry Muffin gently. Yes, yes, Cheesecake, you are right. I will ask them right now, she said. Baby Blueberry Muffin took a deep breath. Then she and Cheesecake took the path to Baby Strawberry Shortcake's house. Baby Strawberry Shortcake was in her garden with Custard, her kitten. She waved to Baby Blueberry Muffin and to Cheesecake. Hi, Blueberry! What a pretty day, said Baby Strawberry Shortcake. Yes, Strawberry, it is a great day, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. That's why I came to see you. Cheesecake nodded. She thought so, too. Baby Blueberry Muffin said very softly, I would like you to come and help me pick. a two sneezed Custard. That is... The blueberries are a two, sneezed Custard again.
baby blueberry muffin blushed brightly. I mean, will you come down and see? Custard noticed the fresh blueberries hanging around Cheesecake's neck. She smelled them closely. They tickled Custard's nose. A two! Sneezed Custard as she brushed against the blueberries. Bless you, Custard! Said Baby Strawberry Shortcake. Custard sneezed again. Baby Blueberry's head sank. She stepped back. We better go, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. I hope Custard feels better. Custard kept sneezing. Baby Strawberry Shortcake put her arm around Custard. Cheesecake squeaked and pointed to the blueberry patch with her nose. Baby Strawberry Shortcake peeked over the fence. She saw the blueberry bushes. The ripe blueberries were glowing in the sun. She turned to Baby Blueberry Muffin and Cheesecake. Were you asking us to help pick your blueberries? She asked. But they were gone. Baby Strawberry Shortcake looked over to the blueberry patches again. She knew Baby Blueberry Muffin very well. Baby Strawberry smiled. Baby Blueberry Muffin saw Baby Raspberry Tart. Baby Raspberry was looking up into a tree. She seemed to be talking to it. Hi said Baby Blueberry Muffin. Are you talking to the tree? Then she blushed as she saw rhubarb on a low branch. I'm fixing this pocket watch that rhubarb found, said Baby Raspberry Tart. It stopped. You are so clever, Raspberry, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. She felt shy, but she stood up bravely. My blueberries are ripe, Raspberry, started Baby Blueberry Muffin. Will you come? Rhubarb began to chatter. I'm inviting all the kids, began Baby Blueberry Muffin. Rhubarb chattered louder. And their pets, added Baby Blueberry. She did want the monkey to come, too. I mean, everyone is invited to pick the pipe berries, she said. I mean to rick the pipe berries, she said. She wanted to hide. Instead, she said, maybe another time. Bye. Rhubarb chattered as they walked away. Bye, Blueberry and Cheesecake, said Baby Raspberry Tart. She looked back at Rhubarb's pocket watch. Baby Blueberry Muffin and Cheesecake walked on through the woods. I know. I will change. I really will invite the next friend I meet, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. Suddenly, they looked down. On the path were huge muddy footprints that could only belong to Fig Boot. In fact, Fig Boot was hiding behind a tree playing with a butterfly. Only his head and tail stuck out. Hi, Fig Boot, said Baby Blueberry Muffin. Fig Boot came out from behind the tree and smiled at Baby Blueberry and Cheesecake. The butterfly flew high into the trees. My blueberries are ripe, Baby Blueberry Muffin began. The bushes are loaded with big fat berries. She stretched her arms way open to show how big the bushes were. Splat! She slipped in a muddy footprint and fell. Mud splashed all over her. Even her hat was speckled with it. Baby Blueberry Muffin stood up slowly. She wiped her skirt. Her cheeks were pink even under the mud. She couldn't even try to talk. She walked home sadly with cheesecake. Why am I so shy? She asked Cheesecake. Why can't I be more like Strawberry Shortcake or Raspberry Tart? She took a bath to wash off the mud. Then she put on a clean dress. Suddenly she heard voices in the blueberry patch. Now who is that? She asked Cheesecake. They walked out together. All the kids were there. They were looking at her blueberries. They were smelling the wonderful sweet air. Each friend held a treat for Baby Blueberry Muffin. Baby Raspberry Tart carried a jar of thick raspberry jam and some sweet bread. Baby Strawberry had her best strawberry shortcake. How did you know? Baby Blueberry Muffin asked Baby Strawberry Shortcake. I was too shy to invite anyone. I tried to, but I couldn't. We heard you trying and we understood, said Baby Strawberry. We love you just as you are. Isn't it good that we are all different? Please don't change, Baby Blueberry Muffin. 
Baby Blueberry Muffin felt her cheeks turn pink, but she smiled anyway. You all must come down here again this fall, she said. Then the berries will all have been picked, but I'll have baked blueberry pies and blueberry muffins and lots of other blueberry goodies. Baby Blueberry Muffin had done it. She had invited her friends to a party. Cheesecake had a big smile on her face. She was very proud of Baby Blueberry Muffin. Strawberry Shortcake and her friends for Pets on Parade. The Strawberryland kids have darling little pets to enter in the great pet contest. Purple Pie Man and a mischievous partner will be there too. Together they try to snatch first prize. But they can't keep Miss Strawberry down for long. Be sure to watch Strawberry Shortcake in Pets on Parade. It's the berries. Hello there. You're invited to Strawberry Shortcake's housewarming party. All her new friends will be there. Mint Tulip and Marsh Mallard, Crepe Suzette and Eclair, Almond Tea and Marza Panda, Cafe Olay and Burrito. The English Twins, Laminata, and their pet, Sugar Woofer. <laughs> oh, even that peculiar purple pie man won't be able to spoil the fun. Be sure to watch Strawberry Shortcake's housewarming surprise. must save Kevin from the clutches of the cruel Professor Coldheart, who lives deep inside the land without feelings. Come along with the Care Bears in this delightful tale of loving, sharing, and of course, caring. Grumpy. 
be there for when you feel blue. I'm not alive. I'm not, baby. I'll cheer you up until I care. A big dream, I dream along with you. Bring me spirit. I'll bring it up. I'll be your friend when you get stuck. Time has come when I must go forth and seek my father. You alone can tell me where to find him. Do not go, Hiawatha. Your father, Magikowis, has great cunning and powerful magic that can destroy you. I, too, have power and strength and cunning, Nokomis. I fear him not, but I must see him face to face. Tell me the way. It is a long, hard way. Across a river greater than any in the land. Across huge grasslands and deserts and into mountains so high that the clouds cannot climb their peaks. Suddenly, Hiawatha came in sight of Majikuwis, the west wind. His heart filled with awe. Approach closer. My power will no longer hold you back. Far have I traveled, my father, to bring you the thousand questions that fill my heart. Many days they talked together, as Majikuwis told of the winds that blow through the bowl of the sky. Hiawatha listened, but as the long hours passed, he grew impatient. Many wondrous tales have you told me, O oh Father, but nothing of the one thing I wished most to hear. Why did you never return when Winona, my mother, died? Did you not know that I wished to be near you? Can you not understand that I am not like mortal men, O oh Hiawatha? The master of life has laid upon me tasks that force me to leave your mother and do what I had to do. You speak nothing but empty words, but words are not enough to escape your responsibility. Hold, Hiawatha. Mighty warrior that you are, you cannot overwhelm me. Father, I am sorry. I don't know what came over me. A son does not attack his own father, and yet... Be not sorry, Hiawatha. It was I who put it into your heart to attack me. I had to do it to test your strength and courage. And I am well pleased with you. You are a fine warrior, but now... From my lips, learn your true destiny. Beauty! Father wants more tea! In the name of mercy. Father, what's wrong? Two of my ships have been lost at sea. A third one is missing. My fortune, it's been wiped out. The house is aflame! Everyone out! Out! By morning, the house had burned to the ground. We've lost everything! We're paupers! We still have our lives. We still have each other. But where will we go? How will we live? Alas, we've little choice. 
The cottage in the dark woods is all I have left. You will pay for the rose you have stolen with your life, merchant. I, I, I never imagined that one so wealthy as you, beast, would care about a single rose. I swear I meant no harm. It was for my daughter, Beauty. Uh, I shall forgive you and spare your life on one condition. Your daughter must come willingly to take your place. It is my fault. I shall go to the Beast in your place. No, I won't hear of it. Nor will Gerard and I. We shall go to the palace and slay this cruel beast. Neither beauty nor father shall be sacrificed. No. I am the cause of our woe, so I must surrender myself to the beast. Now, take my hand. Be as true-hearted as you are beautiful, and we both shall have nothing left to wish for. Beast, you know why we have come. Show yourself if you dare. You have come unbidden into my palace for this. You must pay! Beauty never knew of her brother's attempt to rescue her, though she thought of her family often as the weeks and months went by. Within the palace walls, time seemed to stand still, but Beauty could watch the march of the seasons from its towers. Yet her months of captivity passed quickly, for there was always some new miracle, some new wonder to behold. And every night, there was dinner with the beast. Do you love me yet, Beauty? Will you marry me? Alas, Beast, no. I cannot marry you. Winter became spring, and spring gave way to summer. And though Beauty was enthralled by the palace and its enchantments, she looked forward most of all to her nightly visits with the Beast. She had come to enjoy his company and his conversation. Over time, her pity for the creature had turned to compassion, and her compassion to fondness. But still, it was not love. 